9, Pierre Solibake, number 10, Matthias Bachsten, 13, Gier Magnus Drand, 17, Leif Sovic, 24, Hermann Ullen Hansen, and 33, Naja Nordal. And you can see all the team lists on our homepage, uwr24.de. Yeah, you can find the team lists and you can like look what is the number of your like cheering player. And here we see the blue team, Molde here starting physically but then ball was intercepted by Viktor Krylov at number 23 also a player from Russia from Moscow playing for Hesu in the Finnish league here intercepted the ball and cleared the situation so we see the situation now back in the midfield so let's see we have now the team of uh, Hesu trying to attack I oh, know we they lost just the ball so that's what the camera didn't change and they're now coming back the captain from uh, Molde just brought the ball back. The screen again, so don't worry. There was an attack from the from the Finnish team here, but stopped by the referee call, and now it's been here in favor for Molde in blue here right now. And if we talk about strategy now, we see here Ive Björneren with number seven, the top scorer from the Norwegian team. He, of course, is trying to take his position close to the basket, being passed, being to, uh, trying to receive a pass and then to score. He's like here. a shark, right? Like he positions yeah. himself there, very quiet, say nothing, uh, try and to hide in the corner. Because now he is getting the ball. Yeah, Maybe this is the chance, but he's being attacked immediately. So well defended here again by the Finnish champion Hesu. And now they're trying to attack. They're passing one, two players, and passing to the next one. They're moving the ball around and trying to attack from above. Passing. Oh, oh, he missed the pass. What a from pity. The pity. Norwegian champion. So it's always that they are lying on the open side of the basket. So on the left hand side of the basket. And it's always this wave. So one player is coming in, trying to pass. Ball is getting back. And always they're trying to do in this wave. It's just long passes around the basket so they're keeping the ball close and they're passing it is two three meters oh and very you, deep dangerous uh Ivor is and now you see here holding the basket so Eva Björnerin here attacked and he was stopped by the referee they said he was okay. trapping the and uh okay here we are back with the game and um we can see that um the is on the corner attacking uh on the Finish side now coming from the close uh, area, but being really stopped uh, by the forwards of, of the Finnish team. Now they're coming again in the middle, trying to pass, pass right, and pass down on the corner. Still, they have one player on this side as well. This is very typical from them, so they can play right or left depending where the the the, the gap is. So five minutes played here in the first half. So far, we have seen that the molded team here is like having more ball possession than the Finnish team is doing here. I don't know if it's also a tactical matter. Now we see number two here. Ulver started probably with the best chance so far for Molde. Jakob Larhammer was it with the number two here who had a, a short spot here, a short chance to score, but also here well defended here. And now we see a fast break here from the Finnish Emi Hesu. But this interception, this Aguil wow. playing here, and it's now super crazy. And this blind pass here from Iva Bjornem on the other side, of course, he wanted a player being there, and there was no one. This is something we've learned from Mold in the past years that they're sometimes trying to bring the ball somewhere when they want another player to be. Wow, amazing how the Finnish team have been recovering yeah. in these two, three attacks and really stopping because it otherwise it would have been it's probably crazy, a dead play. Yeah. The ball is like changing the team like a second, each second. It's not even that they're making two passes like white team is in ball possession, blue team is in ball possession, back and again, back and again. It's crazy. So the game is almost just in the midfield or on the side of the of the Finnish team. So the Finnish team really needs to take care here about that they're not losing completely the game. But now the ball here still in in the rows here from from Molde. So Molde is doing here a good job. They're really here keeping the pressure. 
And it yeah, and well, but do you think, I mean, if we go to penalties, I think Molde um, has most ex more experienced player for penalties. So I don't know if all of them are there. That would be the next thing. But um, yeah, maybe maybe it's a tactic that they are just playing defensive and concentrating there and, and risk it at the penalties. I, I don't know. Yeah. So now we are back in the game here. Favor for Moldy here after his free throw. We have seen some couple of couple of uh, referee calls here so far against the Finnish team. Also the Finnish team also needs to take care of the too many faults on the Finnish side. It might be that the referee is going to start calling uh, time suspensions. Not miss the big chance here. This is to one. create some mystery, Thorsten. Yeah, <laughs> to keep it exciting, super exciting. But at least the game is exciting, so we don't need any additional. We are now on the side of Molde. The Finnish team had managed to bring the ball there, but have been recovered by one of the Molde players that is already swimming in the corner, waiting for the rest of the team to arrive, holding the ball down to pass it to the next possible player that just arrived, number four, and now is going like a torpedo toward the goalkeeper that was alone for the second there, trying to, to score from above, but um, the uh, rest of the uh, Hesu team arrive and is now trying to recover the possession of the ball. They're fighting on the surface. Uh, and uh, it's a little bit messy. You can see who had out. Mole recovered the ball and is coming from above, from the corner, trying to pass. That was uh, sadly not very good pass. And they have to regroup again and start the attack from the side again. They go to the corner. They are waiting. Now the first player swims the ward and get the ball to start attacking again. And the Finnish team is really doing a great job there with three, four players. They are defending, recovering the ball. Number 12 did a great job there. Um, yeah, Gaining the Janne. ball and playing around, but it's always like that. They're after winning the ball, they're not able to bring the ball on the Farther other side of the, the basket. Yeah. It's number six here, Jürgen Ulverstadt here, who is trying to score from the open side. And you see, so many, let's say, scoring chances, opportunities here on favor for Molde, but not, it's not like, uh, yeah, it's not fully executed. They're not successful with their chances so far. It's also wondering because usually they are scoring almost every chance they're having. I don't know what is, what is oh, the difference here oh, so far, but this is now the first pity. time. That was almost a good attack from yeah. the Finnish team and the but ball almost, kind of it was too, yeah, lost. Too unconcentrated, executed. So, And here's another counter-attack here, number... 33 here, but the goalkeeper is now pushing his with the hand, he's defending his head, so I'm not, not sure if this is allowed. It was Niall Nordl here with this counter-attack here, and now it's Eva Björnerem, and that's it. Number 7, Eva Björnerem here with the 1-0, and there was a lot of space for him. The first attack here from number 33. He he's makes the starting, then there was number 24, Hermann Ullen Hansen. Who touched the goalkeeper and passed down to Eve Björnerem and he scored from his favorite position here from the open side. It pushed the goalkeeper away and was like throwing the ball in. That's the 1 0 lead here in favor for Molde. Yeah, let's see if Hesu can recover. I mean, Molde has been really dominating the game, recovering the ball every time the white team wants to go to the other side, it's like crushing against a black wall in the middle. We are back at the uh, area of Hesu and they're trying to recover the ball in the corner where Molde is trying to prepare for the attack that they normally do coming from there. Let's see. It's a lot of bubbles. Free throw for Hesu. Three minutes left from the first half. And uh, there's another half time of 15 minutes. So, there let's see. It might be a timeout or something. I don't yeah, know it looks like. Both teams are... Relax. So this is maybe also a good chance here now taking a timeout. I, I predicted this. So yeah, of course. So they're having a three throw now in favor. 
So maybe they have a plan. I know from, to be honest, I know from better and from the Euro League that um, that we have seen some like team tactics after three throws. So there are some plans, some some ideas, some trick movements, some top six quads in the water. So maybe they are using this chance now with the timeout, with the three ma minutes remaining on the clock here in the first half to equalize fast. Because of course, as longer it takes, the harder it will be to score against Molde. So Molde, they're always like dangerous to score with their fast swimmers. Nevertheless, um, the game is not over yet. So let's see what they're playing. No, it's a lot of time still. And the only thing is like, the Finnish team is really having problems. We were once or twice at the basket of Molde, yep. once with a possible attack, but suddenly the ball just slipped out of the hand of the player that was attacking. Uh, otherwise, it's like crashing against uh, a wall of, 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 of bricks. Every yep. time they recover the ball, they are defending fantastic, the Finnish team, but they and cannot you go see here, past. Maybe what they're doing, they're coming with three players, and four players here around the Norwegian basket, but they are too far away now. Here it's from the open side. It's Yuri Boyko with number 60. We mentioned before him. He's trying to score with his massive strength, but he could not execute it. It was not successful. And then here's the ball possession here from Molde. And they are passing around. This is a bit of pity that, that the Finnish team is not here using this small break from the Norwegian team here to really interrupt, to really attack oh. here, to, to, to increase the forechecking. They're a bit defense here, defensive, and nevertheless here you see Molde. And oh, number two, you have a great chance of receiving the but pass. But it was a bad position for him. There yeah, was it was Jakob Lahama. He was like stealing the basket, and the pass was a bit too short. Otherwise, he could just kick it in in the basket. And now we see here again the Finnish team here with, uh, yeah, having the ball possession, but Unfortunately, they are a bit too far away from each other. That makes it easier here for Molde to grab them, to steal them. Now it's back. Yeah, the blackout this morning really completely... Some technical issues the, yeah. this time, unfortunately. But let's say, fortunately, we have not missed this goal and not missed any other good chance. But we are see again the goalkeeper here as goal scorer. Uh, the goal scorer is number seven, Eva Björnerim here on the open side. But... This time he has not received the pass. He's and now it's like one minute left in the first half of the match here. So one minute to go and Hesu has the ball and is trying to go towards the basket of Molde. We're sitting in the middle and I think Molde it's almost had recovered the ball, is about to do so well. No, counter attack, finish player, pass it to the next one, fighting against three of Molde. You see that five Norwegian, five Molde players here yeah. under the water waiting to receive the ball, to steal the pass, and then it's there are I two mean, less finish on the same side. Maybe they need to stop the attacking, passing the ball back, trying to make a start as a second wave. But yeah, the gaps... But they can't even that because yeah. then, uh, then Molde don't give them that opportunity. They are really onto them and they, they, just, they don't have the room, they don't have the space to swim or do anything. Now we see here even another another stolen, another nice second. interception. Uh, if I can, in a minute, toss it. Continue talking. I'll be here, back in a second. Gone, yeah. And now we have in here a halftime break, at least. So halftime break here between in the match for the third place of this championship. We are here the 31st Champions Cup in Berlin. We are playing here the, let's say, small man final. We're going... We're playing here for the third place. Both teams already played in the morning. Hesu from Finland, they lost 2-0 against the Orcas. Molde from Norway, they lost 1-0 against the German champion TSV Malch. Both teams are playing here a super physical first half. Nevertheless, it was Eva Björnerim from Molde who scored the first Score, uh, the first goal assisted by Hermann Uhland Hansen. He was like attacking the, the goalkeeper and then he passed the ball down. Um, and this gave, gave a lot of space. There was a lot of space and a lot of time. Defender was missing. 
uh, on the Hesu side so he could like score putting the ball in. With a 1-0 lead here right now, we are in the halftime. There are another 15 minutes left in this match. So far, but so far, we have seen more scoring chances and more engagement and more ball possession on the side of Molde. Um, but let's see what Hesu, the Finnish champion, um, can do or even change here in the second half. And now with me here is Wolfgang Dries. Well, hey. have you followed the first half or do you need no, to No, not at all. I was busy around the pool, so we have to organize uh, the party and get everything ready. We got the fins. Great. We got the fiberglass fins. We will give to uh, special uh, uh, people of uh, the tournament. Uh, last year it has been to Singapore from farthest away. And we will see what we'll do this year. So I haven't, uh, ch haven't had a chance to watch the game, but I see it now. Uh, Molde is leading 1-0 uh, right. against Hesu. It was Iva Vjernarim who scored. Um, it was, in the, well, let's say, in the middle of the first half. We have seen a bit more ball possession and a bit more action on the side of Molde. Uh, and nevertheless, also a good defense performance from Hesu. Still missing the really big chance here from Hesu to score. But we have seen uh, number 60, uh, Yuri Boyko. One time he was there on his favorite side, left-hand side of the basket. He received once the ball try to score. He's one of the top scorers here on the uh, Finnish team side. Um, but uh, let's see what they can do or change here in the second half. Ten seconds left and then it's, we it's, are being back in the water. It's always interesting to see uh, if they change their playing system, if they get a prepping from uh, their coaches yep. and if they go differently in the water because now uh, Hesu has to risk something uh, to equalize otherwise they are out of the game. Um, so they don't, shouldn't care so much for defense, but go forward, equalize, and then try to score one more to win this game. So it will be difficult in the next 15 minutes for them uh, to control Molde, because Molde will go in the water with their own plan, either just uh, barricading themselves and uh, secure their basket, or even go forward and hold the ball in the area of Hesu, so they don't get a chance to score against Molde. Um, it's still, I think, uh, Hesu is able to um, score here in the next 15 minutes, um, either by uh, uh, hard work or by, just by, by luck in the moment. It, you only need these split of a second sometimes if you press hard enough to go into the basket. So you never know what happens, and that's what makes underwater rugby such an uh, interesting sport. Uh, interesting yeah. sport. Exactly. Here we see this number 60, Boyko Yuri. He's from initially from Russia, but he's also one of the top scorers in the EuroLeague. So we really need to focus at this player. When you see him in the water, he scored uh, also in the previous matches important goals for um, for the Finnish champion here, Hesu. And he's playing as there is no Russian league, or better, Moscow is not playing in the Russian league. So he, that's the reason he's playing for the Finnish team in the Finnish league. And that's also why he's allowed here to play and be participating um, at this tournament. I remember the time when we had Beta here at the Champions Cup. That was uh, quite nice. Yeah. Really liked it. Hope to see Maybe them again one, one day. Maybe we're going to see them again. Yeah, yes, let's see. Hopefully. So let's wait for the signal. And the second half we have on the left in uh, blue is uh, Molde and on the right in white is Hesu. Molde from Norway and Hesu. Uh, Hemelin and Sukkel Dayat uh, from uh, Finland. Waiting for the horn. Tension rises. You get a cramp as a player if it's not uh, on. Uh, here we go. Molde in ball possession. Uh, ball up and down again. And uh, they try to slowly move, walk their way, swim their way into the half of Hesu and already in the corner, um, starting to work on the defense of the Finnish team. Let's see if the Finnish team can, can change anything in their strategy, in their pattern. So far, it's again that they're started or missing the chance from the very beginning to, to get in ball possession. And obviously here the... Agil fast swimmers from Finland, uh, from Norway here, swimming around basket, having enough space here to swim, to play, to pass the ball. This is what they really like, this is really what they really want. And of course for Hesu it will be super important to get in ball possession, to bring the ball on the other side of the pool. 
with here Molly is uh, very dangerous when they are in ball possession and right now for them the time is working in their favor if they control the ball they will win this game throughout this uh, uh, the whole 15, the rest of 15 minutes, and if they uh, can even get a chance to score, so Hesu has to break free. Oh, the ball was lying on the, on the, defender, on the stomach of the defender it. from uh, the Finnish team, but they recovered it, throwing down, very nice mate, but almost instantly under attack by Molde players. So they cannot break out of their own half and the ball is back in Molde position. You see, the big difference between both teams is even the ball handling. Like Molde, they're holding the ball just in the hand with the long arm. It, it reminds me always to, to handball like a similar sport. True. And they're trying to pass the ball fast and strong, making this these unexpected passes. Even sometimes their own players are super surprised where the ball comes from and how fast it comes. And uh, on the other hand, we see like... Uh, Isu playing more physical, more compact, not playing so much around with the ball. Mm. And here even the passes are not that super nice. Like it could be easily interrupted here or intercepted here by the, by the Norwegian players. Nevertheless, we had it also in the first half that the ball possession is changing like super, super fast. Like Call from the tech referee. No referee comes to the surface. throw against uh, Hesu for holding. And uh, it's like Thorsten just said, uh, the, the open uh, play style from uh, Molde gives a lot of opportunities for them to use the area around them. Um, the typical German style, for example, is more secure, more uh, keeping the ball close to the body. But uh, I think the Molde play is more uh, agile, uh, gives you more opportunity, but you need the grip and uh, the power in the arm. That's it. And so far, it was also more successful as we have seen the first goal here in favor for Molde, scored by Eva Björnerim. It was around the mid of the first half. And here again, we see now they're playing in the, from coming, starting from the corner. It's a bit of pity that Bart Inge Pedersen, the number one of Norway's or the Molde team, is not here. He didn't make it this weekend to come to participate in this championship is also a super important player here of the Molde squad. Like you can say, key player when it comes to, to attacking mm. pattern and attacking team styles. Nevertheless, here's the first attack of this half. It was Viktor Krylov with Nicely number 23. Played. Passed the ball down and then it got lost immediately. The Norwegian players here with the strong, fast and passes. Don't underestimate nice. uh, Hesu here when they break free. They work their way into the area. That's a one-on-one -on -one situation. No, number six here finished alone. Finished basket. And this blind pass here down is also great game on this number Worked. four here who missed either Evan Bjorner and missed here the chance here to make the 2-0. It's, it's the danger in the Molde game is uh, Hesu really had to work hard to get in the half of Molde but Molde broke through almost without uh, um, a resistance into the Hesu area and had a one-on-one -on -one situation for what, two seconds. The big difference is that when the Molde players are gaining the ball every player is like starting to sprint to yep. see it that they are able to stop one player, but this player has always an opportunity to pass like the ball. Like situation, yeah. To give the ball on the next station. You see the big difference here with Hesu, when one player got stopped, all the players are waiting behind him. Yeah. At Molde, you or see they're swimming just straight away yeah. from him, just, just in front, and then he's just having the ball passing in front, and there will be someone receiving the ball and continue swimming. And this is the big difference. Oh. Super, super offense, this team. If you play this, uh, uh, these passes right in front of Molde players, you can be sure they get intercepted. It's, it's very dangerous to play these long passes right in front of their defense. And uh, like for the second, third time, uh, the Rixu players uh, tried that, and uh, the, not Rixu, sorry, uh, Hesu, and uh, they lost uh, their ball, and we're back at the basket of the Finnish team. And now we see Viktor Grilov here with number 73, who's passing the ball to his teammate here swimming. Again, 79. all alone in the front. Yeah. Uh, no one to play up to, but uh, he had to wait to turn around uh, to his teammates. This is the difference, like Thorsten already said. Uh, it takes a little bit too long for them to go forward. Oh, that was nice. But here, maybe the one first chance is a bit space. Second. Number 12 here. Jenny is alone in here with this great chance, but this takes too long. You see, this is also the big difference. He tries, he comes from the open side, and then he's trying to grab the ball and score from the close side. Why is he not going immediately, the, the, the strict way, straight away attacking the goalkeeper? Why is he, he already had the gap, he already had the time, and yep. then he all, 
takes another more second to get in a, in a comfortable position. He made another position. move that took another him too move. much time. You don't have this time here on that level on competition. So this was a big mistake on the mole side. Time but out. Unfortunately, Hesu could not use it. Yes, and uh, we have a timeout from Molde. So uh, the the way uh, Molde is using their counter, which we are used to see in their game going forward, as soon as they conquer the ball, they go forward with uh, the team that is down, goes forward no matter yep. what. Yep. They don't exchange, they don't wait, yep. and uh, mostly the players without the ball are in front of the ball carrier. Yep. With Hesu, it's the one who is uh, conquering the ball, is the one alone who has to break through. And it cost them dearly to work their way then with a with a that hesitating moment to work through the offensive defense of uh, the other team. But so far, just to summarize, we've seen the best chance so far from the Finnish number 12, Jani Zalonen, who had the chance, who had like a second, he was second alone with the Molde goalkeeper, but he made one move too much, so... It gives a chance here for Molde here to defend and to get back in the ball possession and to destroy or to stop this attack here from Hezu. Now here, favor for Molde, they've taken a timeout. The first pass was, let's say, a bit creepy or you know, a bit shit because he not, was not properly done. And now we see Eva Björnerim here now with the spline pass at his back and this is the attack. Oh. Well done oh. here, have you seen that? That was Eva Björnerim here with the number seven comes from nicely. the center and then he's on the back, back behind. behind he passed blind to Jürgen Ulvestad. Because he received everybody, the ball and scored. everybody would think Björn yeah. does it himself and he, he passes himself. on. The other players are not covered. So this was excellent. crazy with his, with his, 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 like his mass he's having in the basket is coming there. He was touching the goalkeeper so everyone was focused on him and then he played behind his back to the number six, Jürgen Ulvestad and he immediately scored the 2-0. Well done, Molde. And it's getting more and more difficult for Hesu to uh, turn this game around because A, the time is ticking and B, it's easier for Molde to control the ball. Right and now. Uh, with a 2-0 lead, it's uh, very difficult. Deck referee, uh, give a sign. Molde is already in position. Looks like a free throw against Molde. This was super exciting. Here, seven minutes, thirty seconds left in this match. He's already lost two zero in the morning against Orcas. This was a great performance here from Molde so far with two super great goals. The first one was goal by Eva Björnerim, and then Eva Björnerim was assisting in the second half. Jürgen Ulve start here with this two zero. So this was a night. Both both goals are where like a team play was resulting. Of a, of a lot of like space they gain due to their hard attacking they're doing right now. And now we have a time penalty here. So Molde, I think that was uh, the scene we saw that uh, uh, ended in the free throw against uh, Molde. Oh, no, it was against Hammond in uh, uh, Hezo, yeah. So, so now we, we see uh, Molde here. Victor mm -hmm. Krilov here with number That's 23 here trying to attack. But he's stopped by the Molde player. Two Molde players are Two clinging Molde to players him. Here. So, Pierre Zulibaki with the number nine cleared the situation and now it's Yuri Boyko here now with the number six he tries to score and he missed the chance here. This is this is tight now for the Molde basket. There were two, three, uh, very, very and he number nine and no goalkeeper and, to goal. and a goal. No possible. Never seen that before in the in the Molde playing being uh, pulled up uh, in a in this a is tight cluster up to the surface. The goal was not covered and the ball was passed down to the one uh, Hesu player there and uh, they scored. And we try to find out who scored here, but this was unbelievable. Was it? Nicely done. Number eight, I'm not, sh not sure, but it's super crazy. All the Molde players came back to the surface. And Molde was playing only with five players in the water because we had a time penalty, which is over now. So Molde is back in full force. So uh, five minutes left. And if, uh, if Hesu now uses the momentum they have, they still have a chance to equalize this game. Five definitely, minutes is definitely. good enough. Five minutes left here. And this, this uh, goal was scored by Yari Hövikopki, number nine from Hesu. So now we have seen three goals so far. Iver Björnerim made the first one. Afterwards he assisted 
Jürgen Uwe started in the second half and we already saw that it will be over the match, but then there was a time penalty against Molde and now it's Jari Hövikopki on with an empty net goal here, bringing Hesu back in the match and now it's been, this will be super exciting, last five minutes. Has and again Hesu position. here. Going forward, oh, nicely intercepted uh, by uh, uh, the Molde player, he stopped the pass but recovered, almost recovered. It's a back and forth now in the middle of the pool. We are down. Uh, the model players wrapped around uh, the ball, getting it free in the hands of Ever. And uh, but he's right now all alone and good enough passing on, close tight uh, fighting here um, around the middle of the pool. And now we are back at the Hesu basket. And Finland is in Hello. defense. Ball is right above the basket. And Mold is waiting in the corner. Time is working on their favor still. So uh, while Hesu has to work hard to defend uh, for Molde, it's only to keep the ball, which they lost. They lost it again. And we and see. And now there's a counter. -tick. Super nice. Well done. But again, there's one move too much. They need to be more strict. They need to be and more no efficient in scoring. No and one no else. one else. There should be someone in front of uh, the Hesu player carrying the ball. There's the big ball. difference between the Molde game style and the Hesu game style. That, that Molde found a way to immediately attack, immediately push the ball call towards the goalkeeper the and the score. But again, here we have a referee call. We don't the see. referee came to the surface, talking to the players. see the decision Looks but it like should be in favor of probably for Riks uh, for Hesu because they're still in the water no Molde now coming on the opponent side so it will be a three throw against Hesu we're going to see a three throw in favor for Molde three minutes left Exciting and there's game. a timeout I've seen the Hesu player asking for a timeout that the timeout left and now it is here. It Hesu. still is an exciting game because it, it's not like uh, Molde is dominating it totally. I think there's a good chance with they the They did attacks. it, to be honest. They yeah, did it, they did. But, they did uh, it from the beginning, saw... but right now, do you see how, how, how quick a game can change? There's just one situation. It, for example, it was a time penalty here right now, two minutes. And this power play was immediately used. They made a good move. Viktor Grilov was attacking, then we have Signori Boyko try to score and we already saw, okay, Mold is having the ball, bring the ball to the surface and then it dropped down and finally it was Yari Hövikopki who put the ball in the empty net. A big mistake here by Molde. Yeah. I was really wondering to see Molde score without anyone. Never seen that before. So uh, there's a good chance here for uh, Hesu to turn this game at least as a 2-2 around and we would go into the penalty shooting. Um, which difficult to say in which favor it would be. Uh, there's always luck involved, but Molde is used to. But do... is there a player now on the time penalty no. bench on the finish side? I no. think there was a player standing there. We don't have. Let's a... see. Okay, there's no. Either. There's no on that side, but he was just maybe just standing outside. Because I was wondering a bit. So he was just exchanging. No, there is a time penalty. Yeah, I've seen it correct. Yeah, you're right. Yes. So there's a player from Finland outside. So Finland just with, or the Hesu, just with five players in the water. We have not seen the number of the player. Oh, who's that on makes the it really difficult bench. for the last three minutes yeah. uh, for them to build up enough momentum to push into the defense and score against Molde. So, uh, wow. Um, this will be super hard now, at I least for Molde. It's quite comfortable here. They can try to score, but even if they don't do it, it can take two minutes down from the clock, and there will just there will be just one minute left here. One minute with the full squad in the water, and time here for Hesu to equalize. And we're in the middle of the pool, in the in the corner of the pool at the Hesu side, and uh, the Finnish players try to rip the ball out of the hands of the Molde players who are uh, in the at the bottom, at the top of the, of the surface now and uh, fighting for the ball. But uh, like we said, Molde uh, just needs wait for the time and control the ball. So uh, we have two minutes left and after the This was a long time for Ivo here on the number 13. It's, it's just five uh, Finnish players in the water. Yep. Really difficult for Hesu to use that and power to break free. So 
this is like what you see a molded they go in the corner they're going up and down they're of course bringing a certain pressure towards their the hesu basket nevertheless they don't attack proper so it's like more or less a bit of fake playing here around taking the time from the clock 20 seconds left here for the time penalty it was no the captain or even using tried to pass a ball to eva Bjorner, but it was quite long pass and predictable for for Hesu, so they intercepted here but still molder here with the ball four seconds left three two one and now the last we have almost the last minute in the match Hesu now with a full squad back in the water the time penalty is over now and one minute left but it will be super hard for them well molde is doing because like controlling molde the here, ball and taking their time around. yeah it's uh they don't have to prove nothing in uh, 45 seconds, this game will be over and uh, will be won by Molde. If Hesu cannot break course, free, they need get to a risk ball. right now. They need to leave their goal position, maybe a bit. Yeah, they should throw everything forward they have in the last uh, um, 30 seconds and try to break free and forward. And now there's, but they're still defending and trying to get the ball. Out of the hands. And here, of now the we see player. maybe number four here again. It was Evan Björnerim, his brother from Eva Björnerim, and both are here. Still bring the ball to the surface. Five seconds left, and we can say now this game is over. In favor for Molde, and we see Molde winning here with 2 1 after two scores. One was made by Eva Björnerim, and the other one, Eva assisted Jurgen Ulvestert in the second half of the match. His was fought very super hard. They tried to equalize. At least they scored with um, Yari Jovikorpa in the second half during a time penalty against Molde. But at the end,